Hey, good afternoon, guys. It's Greg Christensen with Graham V Livestock. I just uh, moved this fence here on the clover. There's a U, three little triplets, not very old. But I just moved this fence for strip grazing and this clover. As you can see, they got one side laid down pretty good. I don't know, it's probably uh, six inches tall maybe, but they got most of the leaf ate off the clover. And uh, the oats have been eaten up. So here you can see the, the new side and the old side, pretty plain. So uh, we used two wires on these sheep and goats. Uh, we get by one wire where we just have sheep, but uh, I don't know, I'm not convinced yet that one wire can work very good. We usually go back to two after we try one for a while on the goats. Um, because they'll jump over it a lot more than a, the uh, ewes will jump. So, I was going to show you here where we put the uh, wire on these O'Brien posts and all the posts are, are pretty much the same spacing. So we come up to the third one from the bottom for the bottom wire and then the fifth one from the bottom for that top wire. I would like the top wire to be a little higher but if you go up to that next clip it's too high. They'll go through the middle of it. Um, so that's what we're doing here now and it works real well as long as they, they don't start you know, running out of forage and well when they think they've run out um, is what matters it's not when you think they run out because then they'll go to jumping over this but they'll stay pretty well now if we just graze it like we grazed that last piece now as you can see I was just going to show you here they came in here I've been here a few minutes, but the first thing they want to eat is this curly dock. They've eaten that. It's just a stalk there now. But it's uh, mostly a weed if, if you was a farmer or if you was, had a bunch of it in your farm lot or something. I'll see if I can find some here they haven't eaten. And you can see this, this clover isn't quite blooming yet. Just a bloom here and there. It's going to be pretty high in protein, probably 20%, um, at least 18. And there's some oats in here. Here's some oats. It's getting pretty far along. Um, and, oh, that looks like some uh, dwarf barley, or it's another winter annual kind of a weed. But they will hit that curly dock the first thing. They'll pick it out of the clover, everything else. And usually that means something is, is highest nutrition is what they kind of go after first. Um, it's got to be, it tastes good, but uh, usually that higher nutrition tastes good to them. Um, Yeah, that's not curly dock. That's a smart weed of some kind. I may have to go over there where they haven't grazed yet. Yeah, here's a good picture of uh, some curly dock there. Up here where they haven't been grazing yet. Um, yeah, you'll recognize it's just a weed. But cattle, sheep, goats, boy, they really like it. There's some more of it there. Sweet clover here growing beside it too, you see. It's an early spring clover. Uh, they like it too. They like it real well this time of year. And they'll get kind of tough and coarse and they won't eat it too much. Uh, here later, probably first part of June.
Yeah, so this clover's been here, you know, this might be going on the fourth year. Uh, it's red clover. It's generally a two-year clover, what I mean. It'll go to, come up from a seed and it'll grow the next year. And then it's pretty much done after that. But this has reseeded itself uh, a few times. And so, yeah, it's really gotten thick out here now. And uh, I told you in a previous vi video about being careful when you turn your animals out on on a really good lush clover like this. And so uh, now I just let them out here a couple hours the first day, three hours the second day or so, and a little bit longer for maybe about four days. And now they're okay. They stay out here and then they'll They'll go off and they'll go over on the other side that, through that gate to the pasture and uh, eat fescue out there. And there's some red clover out there, out there also. But um, And out in here, I mean, they'll take a bite of a clover and then they'll, you know, chase it down with a bite of oats and, and maybe some ragweed just down in there. And, and other things so but uh you sure want to introduce them to, to heavy clover like this kind of kind of slowly but uh but now there's no problem they've been out here for a couple weeks or so now um i gave them a, a chunk here oh, it was probably about four days worth or something it it takes a little longer to string your two wire fence and this is probably close to a quarter mile stretch across here so you need to allocate your labor and uh, so you don't want to move this fence every day or at least I don't so I want to move it uh, maybe where it averages me about I don't know 30 minutes a day or or uh, 15 or 20 minutes a day so you know today it took me a little longer I had some problems but uh, Let's say it takes an hour to move this fence. Then I want to keep them on here for, uh, you know, at least three days probably. Um, so give them a three-day three day chunk. And it's not rocket science. Sometimes you'll give them too much. Sometimes you won't give them enough. Um, but it's a learning process. A lot of really small kids out here. We pushed a bunch of them across the creek the other day before they kitted. Now they've kitted on this side of the creek and they can come back and forth. It really didn't matter what kind of weeds are out here, what kind of vegetation. It's all forage. There's not hardly anything that a goat or a sheep won't make use of when you combine them together. This is Greg Christensen. Hey, I hope you're having a happy grazing day.